Hey guys, what's going on? This is Mr. VP, and welcome back to another Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom video. Now today what we've got in our hands is the Rorovores Triceratops. And I'm really excited about this one because this is one of my favorite dinosaurs. The Triceratops has a very special part in my heart. Uh, I remember in the first movie that scene where, uh, you know, everyone jumps out of the tour vehicles to go see the sick Triceratops. That was such a touching scene. And I'm really happy to see a uh, Aurorovores Triceratops because I love the noises. Even though they kind of sound like they might belong to other dinosaurs, like that one there sounded like it might be from a T-Rex. But still, it's really awesome. And I like the color scheme on it. I like that it's the brown. There are some other ones out there. For example, the Battle Damage one that comes in this lime green look. I do much prefer the uh, the brown one. I don't actually remember ever seeing any Triceratops in the movie that's green, but it, it pops too, so I get why they did that. So let's take a look at the packaging. So the packaging is the pretty standard Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom packaging. You've got the logo on the top left, Owen and Blue the Raptor down there in the bottom left. You've got the Aurorovores Triceratops in the, in the middle. You've got the little headbutting action shown in the bottom right, and then it shows you in the top right that it makes noises, and then there's a little hand, you know, pressing the back here, showing you that that's how you activate the, the, the noises. Uh, this side of the box, just the Jurassic World logo. This side, same thing. And bottom of the box, just some boring information about don't eat small parts, and it's made in China, stuff like that. Back of the box, very cool illustration here showing that you push the button for sound and head rimming action and again it shows the little finger pressing down to the button on the back and again it shows that the head moves up and down in a head ramming fashion and it includes the batteries which are three AG13 uh, button cell batteries and then the bottom left corner it shows the Allosaurus, Baryonyx and Metricanthosaurus also available and uh, they're all Rorivores. So this figure I want to say was 1984, somewhere in that ballpark, and I think that it's well worth that. So without further ado, let's do the unboxing. Okay, so it looks like it's just a few little ties here. Oh, that was easy. Okay, and And we'll get those instructions out of there. And that's it for the packaging. And we'll just review the instructions here. So contents, one triceratops with one tail. One triceratops with one tail, perfect. And then put the tail in, press the button, here's how to replace. So unscrew here, and oh by the way there is that a little code thing on the bottom foot there. Also got a little bit of uh, white paint on the toes there. I don't think that's meant to be, but whatever. Okay, done with those. And we'll just go ahead and click the tail in. Nice. Okay. So I have to say, it's a nice figure. Now, articulation wise, We'll go from the back to the front. So legs rotate all the way around, even though it gets a little hard right here because the body gets in the way. There is a little bit of side to side in out motion. And obviously the tail, there's no articulation there because we just had to click that in. It's, it's very solid. Moving forward, you've got the front legs. And again, these have a nice side to side swaying motion and it also goes all the way around. The problem is the the way the body's molded, even though it, it could technically go around if you force it, it's gonna end up breaking something, so I don't recommend trying to force it. As we move up to the neck, there is only the articulation that is actuated by the button here. So you can free move it. It looks like it's on some kind of ball, but it won't stay in any poses or anything. It's just for that uh, head ramming that's tied to that, so. I do like the coloration again, I, I like the brown paint, I like the dark brown accents. 
I'm a little curious why it has like a little goldish yellow on the back of both legs here and only on the back too. I don't remember seeing that in the movie uh, and I don't know what that signifies and it's only on the back legs and I checked the other uh, Triceratopses in the store to make sure this wasn't just defective or had bad paint or something and they were all like that so I'm, I'm really curious why. But moving on the face is a really nice sculpt. It reminds me of the first movie very, very much. Paint apps are done incredibly well. Uh, no, no extra paint getting anywhere. Just perfectly painted on here. And the, the horns look like they're a nice like satin finish, whereas the, the rest of the head looks like it's almost like a, like a matte, like a dull finish. The body is definitely a little bit shinier, so I'd say that's more of a satin as well. And I do like that the frills are painted their own color. They're the little, you know, uh, off-white color to match the, the horns. So I'm really excited about this figure, but you guys probably want to see the head ramming action attack feature, or not action attack, but head ramming and noises and all that. So let's go ahead and demonstrate. So again, there's that roar that kind of sounds like it belongs to a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So what do you guys think? I like it. It feels really sturdy. It feels really durable. I feel like you can play around with this and not have to worry about it breaking, which is always really nice. I'm probably going to add this to my uh, my display here. But let's show with some of the vehicles in the Jurassic Park franchise. So first up is the JP18 Jeep Wrangler with the working winch. and I don't think that's the scale because I remember the Triceratops looking gymungus in the movie and uh, I feel like it would have, probably would have been a lot bigger than the Jeep. And while we've got them out, here's a look at one of the figures from this collection. And I want to say that that scales very, very well. Next up, we've got the Textron Tiger. Yeah, I can kind of see that working. Again, this, this Triceratops looks a little small, but hey, it still works, I think. Okay. Okay, now let's show it with some other dinosaurs. So here's the Baryonyx, also a Roarivore. And here is the Action Attack Stegosaurus. These actually scale really well together. I'm kind of surprised. And here is the leaping blue figure that I've yet to figure out how to do. I think that scales pretty well. And last but not least, the Thrash and Throw Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah, I think that scales pretty well. Maybe this would be better suited with the uh, Legacy Collection T-Rex or the one that comes with the uh, Monolophosaurus, which is the same mold. Only a little bit smaller than that one. So yeah, that's pretty much it for, for today, guys. I really like this figure. I think it's a definite buy, and I like the sound feature with the ramming action uh, of the head. But what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you, do you hate it? Do you think they should have done something differently? 
And uh, so that, that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate the support. Please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any of my content and click that bell. And uh, let me know what you think. Do you want to see anything specific coming next? Or do you want to you know, just have me pick? Or whatever you want me to do, I'll do. I really appreciate the feedback. And uh, thank you for the support. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.